What is up, everybody? It's your boy Rogue here. So, I'm back in Bolingbrook, Illinois, at my shop. Well, I'm not in the shop. I'm in the parking lot of the shop because they're, they're attached to a mall. Like, there's literally, I don't know if you guys know about the spot, Bar Louie. Um, there's not too many of them open anymore, but there's a Bar Louie over here. There's a more Asian kitchen. More Asian kitchen is a local spot. It's a pretty good um, place to get some Filipino food. But nevertheless, man, this is um, back in the suburbs, the deep suburbs, about 26 miles from my house for another Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. I'm excited this week because your boy finally finishes you bell deck. Now, I've been holding a secret on how I'm going to build it. I think I've mentioned it a few times in the videos. My version of you bell is going to be different. It's not going to be the Unchained build. I'm actually making my own build. It's going to be called you bell kaiju. I'm using the kaiju engine. So the whole purpose is I know you bell kind of struggles against Cash Tira from what I've been told from you bell players in my area. So I know kaijus can out the Cash Tira it has terror monsters by just tributing over them to special summon to your opponent's field. And then you can use U Bell Crash and deal heavy damage to your opponent and have complete control of the game state. And also, too, I mean, even though U Bell can wipe boards with Super Poly, it's still mainly a control deck. So it's better, in my personal opinion, to just go if you can resolve it, interrupt the Kaiju Slumber, pop all your opponent's field. Field, give them a monster, start to you bell plays, and furthermore, push for heavy damage um, in that order. So, my whole goal is all theory. I haven't tested the deck le left. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting a little tongue tied. I haven't tested the deck yet. It's all theory craft. Most I've done is some test hands at home. And I built my side deck um, with like three solemn judgments. I know the deck can lose the evenly match. And um, Artifact Lancia, per my boy Chango, he pool plays the deck. So, my first time with the deck, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm excited to see how I do. Um, I got about 20 minutes of my um, local start, so I'm going to catch you guys at the round one, man. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to round one. I ended up playing against my local resident U Bell player that actually was not playing with U Bell. My man was on the Earthbound Prisoner Runic deck. Piloted by Joshua Smith. Apparently, I, I researched the deck after I um, played this game. It was a deck that Joshua Smith built on stream with his chat that was surprisingly he said was really good. So this was a pre pretty much interesting game to say the least. One thing, this is my first game ever live touching the U Bell deck outside of just me doing some test hands at home. And honestly, the deck surprisingly wasn't that bad to play. Um, I'm pretty sure I made a few misplays. Misplays definitely was made. However, I was learning the deck still, so bear with me. But my opponent didn't really have nothing to do. Um, he knew how the deck played. However, I kaiju this runic monster. I don't know why I kept telling myself kaijus are good against runic. However, um, I kept forgetting that they are. And I had you build on board. And as I'm watching this game right here, I believe I probably forgot to tribute my Samsara Lotus. However, with that being, or it probably was on my opponent's turn. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell, but it did appear like I forgot to tribute my opponent's heart a little bit. My opponent plays you, Bill, so he, I didn't know, honestly. So it wasn't intentional. Nevertheless, I had a way just, because since our lotus didn't really matter, I had a way just to um, pop off, because I had the whole setup of the Nightmare Pain, the, the Trap, the Fusion, and I burned for a lot of light point damage. And I'm going to do hit my opponent with a lot of damage in this game. So my opponent really wasn't able to do much, but just... Um, Get beat. I wouldn't even say he got outplay. I just had a lot of answers to what he could do. And ended up getting game one. Like, it's a really kind of hard describing these matches because I'm so used to saying attack for game, attack for game, attack for game versus me playing something controlling. I don't really play control decks like that. So I started off with strong game two, Shifter. Shifter is very powerful versus Runic. Um, and he did chain some Runic stuff. I'm like, okay, you know, Runics can do that. Chain again, chain again. So way around Shifter, of course. And I'm like, okay, banish our car. Our car was Spirit of You Bell. However, you know, so far we down, but we ain't out. Open up my um, open the Spirit Gaze. Go grab a Dark Monster, Dark, and I'm just gonna start popping off from there. Luckily for me, my opponent didn't have any hand traps. That's a key point because, like, I've come to find out in my following tournament after this tournament right here, my build while it's a solid build, man, it Ash Blossom hurts almost as bad as it hurts um freaking branded but that's neither here or there i'll say that later for the video so anyways man smash that like button to get this video to 100 likes and now if you guys are watching on the premiere and or after premiere man hit that donation man anything you guys want to give is highly appreciative hit the super chat or super thanks 
to show some love and support to your boy. Ended up winning this game because I just had all the answers. See you guys in the next clip. All right, guys, round one is over. Actually, won my first match with Ubel. First time playing a deck, too, against the Ubel master himself, using a different deck, though. He was on that Joshua Smith. They had something to say, I'm sorry. Uh, say again? You had something to say, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I was on, I was on Earthbound Runic today. Shout out to Joshua Smith. How did, how did you like it? I like it quite a bit. I feel like I saw a lot of runic spells in the course of both games. I drew like I went like plus six game one, but I was sitting on uh, like triple hacks in hand that were never live because this guy wasn't activating any monster effects. Right. <laughs> he was just sitting on big old fusion. I was trying. But yeah, man, um, it was an interesting game. I ended up luckily getting it, and I'm gonna open my pack right now. Um, Surprisingly, Ubel is not that hard to play. I mean, some plays are very intricate, but it's a very simple deck. I picked it up really good by game two. Um, and plus, watching all the YouTube videos helped as well. And my packs are trash. However, um, yeah, we're going to try to catch you guys in the next clip. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to round two. The tournament ended up playing against Black Wings, a deck I was not expecting. Apparently, they got new support, and I've definitely found out because the deck was pretty annoying to play against. Luckily for me, I opened a D Shifter, man. Like, I don't know what it was about this day, man, but D Shifter was on me like white on rice, and that definitely hurt my opponent from popping out the way he wanted to. I tried to go for my uh, Spirit of U Bell play after the Samsara Lotus, and I got met with an um, Infinite Impermanence. And don't ask me to explain these Blackwing monster effects. I don't remember what they do. These are all, for you Blackwing players, you guys already know what they do. Luckily for me, my opponent kind of didn't um, expect the Nibiru. A lot of people aren't really expecting Nibiru main deck. Luckily for me, I opened it, and that stopped me from getting OT, because I definitely was, um, I mean, I wasn't scared of getting OT regardless, because I did have my, my, my monster couldn't be sure about battle by card effect. I mean, couldn't be sure about um, battle, and I can't be, affected with life point damage so i wasn't worried regardless that extra nib under a um under a shifter um hurts a lot so i was able to um get rid of his token and then you know super poly nib attack directly gg no re pretty good pretty powerful typical plays and i was just thinking like man this deck actually is really lit and at this point i was literally falling in love with the U Bell deck i'm just like man this deck is good when your opponent don't have hand traps but that's neither here or there and my opponent started popping off the black wing stuff and i was like man what does this deck do i don't mean, i don't think they set up how um, many gays but in this new version of black wings they abuse like the hot red dragon and it's actually pretty scary they put up like a few interruptions they have a hand negate that's like a monster negate and i'm like oof this is kind of annoying i don't know what i'm gonna do i forgot i was just thinking to myself like man this is kind of frustrating I forgot, I don't think I sided in anything for this match because my deck naturally anti metas everything. Uh, but I do remember I opened up Kaiju and interrupted Kaiju Slumber. So me going second wasn't really bad. Cause, and I also had Super Poly as well because I was definitely breaking this board. So I was just debating how I'm going to break this board. I'm like, no, let me go ahead and um, Kaiju is monster, interrupt Kaiju Slumber, start popping off the Samsara Lotus. And my opponent didn't have any hand traps. And this is how I was like, yeah, time to come back. So. I unfortunately got met with some negation on my Spirit of Ubel, of course, but I was able to do a, few, a little bit of damage on his monsters. And I had Super Pilot to fuse away the field, which is always good, burn for the life point damage. Unfortunately for me, though, man, this game was a really back and forth game, and it ended up to a top deck game. And I was still kind of rookie with deck. My opponent started popping off, and my opponent is going to be able to put enough damage on board to get me before time is called which sucked because the reason why i sucked because i know on the following turn i could have won however it be like that but yeah man time is a thing and time happens so i'm gonna catch you guys on the next clip y'all stay tuned we ended up drawing all right guys round three is starting into the drawing round two against black wings of all things um they had burn effects and we were running a long time and i'm pulling red on my cards not a big deal it always happens you build a new deck so i'm not really tripping on people reading cards it just sucks i definitely felt like i would have won a follow turn but crap happens right so pretty crowded house today digimon and um Yu -Gi -Oh. the digimon scene here is crazy so if you guys are in the chicago land area check it out for digimon so yeah man i'm about to play my next round and yeah Y'all stay tuned. Alright guys, I'm going to the final round of this tournament. Ended up playing against heroes of all things. 
this is something I did not expect. It's weird being on the opposite end of my own deck. Um, but it's also good because I know the ends not a hero, and I know the chances and probability of them opening up a trash hand or somewhat of a brick hand. So I started out, I think, I think I went first, my opponent passed, or I kind of forgot what happened. Like I said, this is this happened Thursday, and I'm editing this vlog on Saturday night for you guys to get it on Sunday afternoon. And I started out, I had a pretty good hand, you know, my hand wasn't bad, you know, I had a trap, I had an imperm, I had shifter, so we're already starting off good. I knew my, I didn't have to worry about no swift hero OTK. However, my opponent was trying to pop out a bunch of monsters, and I am going to drop a Spirit of you bell on that uh, on him, so that way he can't hit me with no battle phase or no battle damage. He's going to go for the mash chains, dark long defense mode, and I'm going to super poly, and he's just going to scoop it up. And he took a lot of damage, too, because he was stuck in battle phase, so yeah, know how that be. Coming to the game, too, um, I don't think I sighted anything. I'm like, you know, I, I play boar rights, I play Bo Shifter, I play literally everything to, to stop hero, so I just need to open up one of those cards and I was good. Open up Shifter and Perm, that was like almost more than enough. Um, my opponent is going to pop off and kind of somewhat get pit up a good fight this time, mainly because he's running a lot of um, different techs in his build, like he side stops Cop and Cyclone. He is running the um, that one, hey, that one um, um, hero spell in Shuffle where you shuffle but one back. And he started doing a lot of Hero Neil's plays. In addition, I think he was also running like two Polys or two Miracle Fusion. It was like a weird version of Heroes that just worked with any running Serenity Prosperity. I was like, oh my god, this man's on that gas. So, luckily for me, um, I had Super Poly with the u Fusion. And I was able just to just to stall him out and just get rid of his feel. And he didn't have a lot of back row um, disruption. And or he didn't have a lot of hand traps. However, he did have the favorite contact. And I did learn in this game that you can recycle favorite contact. Then I know that you can just add it back from the graveyard. That's something, if I ever do pick up the hero deck again in the near future, I'm going to be doing a lot more. And if I didn't know it, I just forgot it. Because, you know, heroes sometimes, I don't really play. I don't like playing the deck because the deck, I feel like it's just dated. It's a good deck, but it's just dated. Ubel is fun because it's new and it's fresh. Up in the end of the day, I'm going to win this game just because my, I have a lot of knowledge in the hero deck. And my opponent couldn't OTK me. And I was definitely um, going to be able to beat over him at with the light points with the U-Bell stuff. So, catch you guys in the next clip. You guys, round three, we're going to end up beating heroes out of all, out of all things. It's so weird playing it's my own deck, because I know everything my opponent can do. But his play was playing, was playing some weird stuff, man. He's playing some spice in your build. Yeah, I got uh, that, all that, um, the Ian Shuffle and the yeah. uh, Spirit of Neos and stuff. Yeah, those are pretty good. Really good yeah. cards, Spirit honestly. Spirit of Neos uh, searches this trap. That's why I'm playing it. Um, okay. Which is a uh, spell in the game. Yeah, I, I used to run that before. That card's pretty cool. There's a good combo. You can do that turn one. But yeah, um... It was a really good game, but you bell just go crazy. I'm so surprised on how good this deck is with how little, I don't say how little effort I put into building it, but like, I literally built it in one night, never played it, and it doesn't really take a lot of brain power to play. You just literally just play card, play card, pass. And the way I, with the way I build it with the Kaiju engine is literally insane because you have nothing you're scared of because they make a tower of monster kaiju they make a big board in order to kaiju slumber get the knee bruise i probably argue this is better than the unchained building no, honestly this is insane this is really fun too and there's more u-bell stuff coming out so let's go <laughs> anyway um yeah excited for the next round man y'all stay tuned <laughs> all right guys so there was one of the feet left so the shop decided to just um in the tournament early, which is fine with me, I guess. So, technically undefeated with you, Bell. And Blackwing is undefeated, too. Shout out to this dude. And um, I'm about to open my packs right now to see um, what I get. Which is black hands I wait from. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm half black, guys, so I can make those type of jokes. Anyway, let me go ahead and open my packs right now to see what's going on. You, Bell, play crap. You, Bell, went crazy today, though. Shout out to this dude right here. Dex insane. I ain't all that old. I'm going to try to see if I can pull something better. Hopefully. Guys, Grinder, Golem, Swallow's Nest, Ray Raptor, BS. Okay, next up. A 20 video, like the vlog, man. I might do a part two to this vlog within this video because I don't think I'm going to get my son this weekend. So the next clip may or may not have. Oh, this is pretty cool. I may be at the um, Emporium TCG Locals for the double payout Saturday. So be on the lookout for that and stay tuned for that if I am. 
Um, come on, big money, big money, big money. Dark Guardian. Rank up. Same old, same old. But yeah, man, the deck played really good today. I'm really satisfied with the list. A simple deck to play, and yeah, deck went crowd black, goat, wild. What is it? Do? Declare one moss card. Need to play special summon moss with the original name. Yeah. Except for the graveyard. You can banish this card from the graveyard, declare one monster card, and it's turn. Do your play, cast the effects of monster in the field's original name. The card seems like it'll be good later. I don't know how good it is now. At least I pulled a secret, though, so I can't complain. One of my. Money card for the future, what deck? What deck, sir? Tell us, tell us the spice. I can't tell everybody the spice yet. That's the funny thing. The black gold black secret spice. Okay, what is it going for now? Right now, I think. What's your bull? Oh, you got a freaking quarter century. Let's go. Hell yeah. Work <laughs> tournament worth it. That's another one. Oh yeah, but hey. Pulling good stuff out of the packs. Let's go. But yeah, man. Like I was saying, back to you, Bell. Dexon play. Like, didn't expect it to be as good as I thought it was gonna be. And easy to play as I thought it was gonna be easy to play. But the deck's fairly easy to play. Heroes is definitely harder to learn than you bell. You bell's simple. Play this, summon this, search this. Any veteran Yu-Gi-Oh player can pick that can play, pick that deck up, watch a few videos like I did and learn a deck within a few hours. Like the deck's really simple. Alright, so last two packs is the OTS packs. Come on, big money, big money, big money. Uh, uh, okay. And one more. Come on, big money, big money, big money. Big money, big, uh, yeah. No big money on that one. At least I pulled a secret, so. I don't know what the next clip gonna be, guys. I might be at another shop, man. Um, anyway, see you guys in the next clip. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, it's Saturday, and I just got off work, and we are at Emporium TCG. is right there in front of that silver car for the double payout day. So, you guys already know. I already put it all over Twitter. And by the time you guys watch this video, the title is probably going to say um, how good I did with the U-Bell deck today as well as the other day. But I went undefeated the other day with U-Bell. Um, technically, not undefeated, but technically was. It was two wins and a draw. It was three rounds. Local should have been four rounds. But they decided to end it because there was one undefeated. That shop mainly caters to like Digimon and like Pokemon. So I don't think they really know how Yu-Gi-Oh structure works. And I did speak to some of the judges there, and they did say um, that a lot of times when a tournament, if, there, if there's one undefeated, you get in the tournament early. And then people be wanting to go home, so I ain't no really tripping. Anybody be tripping on that? It's not that big of a deal. But um, I'm back at Emporium TGG. Last time I came here, I screwed up because I lost against Fire Kings last round. But I'm feeling good about you, Bell, man. The deck play is so freaking good at Sully's Abode the other day. So shout out to Sully Abode. Great locals. They always treat me right when I go there, so I love that place. This place treat me right, too, but you know, Sully's Abode is like that suburban local that's just real chill. If you know, you know. But yeah, man, I'm going to take my you, Bell, deck in here right now. Sign up for the tournament. I guess I'll catch you guys after round one, so y'all stay tuned. Alright, guys. I'm going to round one of the tournament. I ended up playing against Runic Fish. I had no idea what the hell this deck did, not even gonna lie. I didn't know this deck was even a thing, but apparently there's a fish deck. I think it's the Goaty Fish and the build I played against ran the running engine. So I, I won the dice roll, thank God. Um, unfortunately for me, my opponent, uh, actually no, did I win the dice roll? I don't think I did, I think my opponent won the dice roll. I forgot what happened, nevertheless I started popping off. Got hit with a runic spell to destroy my um, Nightmare Pain, he said he did it on activation. He was kinda confused on how a lot of the um, the U Bell stuff plays, so I was like, okay, you know, U Bell effects are it's because they have people you your play from like to read. So, um, nevertheless, um, I just popped off, have a lot of uh, monsters on board. Once again, if my descriptions for a lot of my U Bell plays is a little um, groggy, like I said, I'm still learning the deck. I don't know everything off the top of my head, but I was able to span a field with the U Bell monsters, flip the um, trap card up, and able to get U Bell out because it destroyed my stuff. Got met with the ass by some early in that duel, and then he started popping off. There was a lot of thinking going on in his field because he didn't really know how to handle you, Bell. And I did um, get rid of his monster to bring out the fusion, burn for more damage. He was low on life once at this point, and so he just decided to pass. Now, my turn, I'm going to go ahead and make um, Gustav Max burn him for 2000 and attack directly for game. Um, he actually, guess he didn't know about that play, so yeah, that kind of won me game one. Game two was a lot of tr was really tricky, honestly. Um, really frustrating because like 
Game one took a lot of our time. Game one was like probably 20, 25 minutes at that. And my opponent popped off. I didn't really have any hand traps, or at least I don't remember. I think I had a, a ba Baylor or Ash, if I'm not mistaken. Now, actually, I had Ash, and I just slowed him down. However, my opponent's also going to have a hand trap as well. So I just set three, set one pass. I believe I had a super poly set. And there's one thing I learned about the UBL deck. Like, when it breaks, oh my god, it breaks. But when it draws good, baby, it draws amazing. But, like I said, that the deck's incomplete. There's more support coming out. I'm just happy to play something new and be one of the early pioneers of the deck. So that way, once the new support comes out, I can be a, a newer pioneer. It's the deck kind of already solved. 90% there, but you know we all got to add our own spin on it because the new version of it, it has like a field spell and it has more UBL support cards that you kind of don't have to run the Unchained stuff. Even though the Unchained stuff synergizes very well. I'm thinking still of running the Kaiju build when the new support comes out because the Kaijus just synergize naturally with UBL. Being able to break boards is really good. Or I might just side the Kaijus. I haven't really decided yet and I don't know how I'm going to do it. But all I know is I'm loving this deck. And um, yeah, Super Pop is the thing that's going to help me stay in the game on this one because I'm going to go ahead and um, get my monster sent to the graveyard. And we literally had 30 seconds left on the clock. I had to rush the battle phase to attack his monster for game. So I'm going to catch you guys in the next clip. Hey guys, round one is over. End up beating um, Runic Fish. That was a really annoying deck. <laughs> You know, luckily got it with the um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm open lines right now. <laughs> luckily I got it with the skin of my teeth before time got called. But it was a, it was a rough game. But I won game one and then one in time game two. All right, I'm open my packs right now. So I pulled the person next to me opened up the alt here already. Maybe I put something good though. Uh, let's see, big money, big money. Let's see, give me an alt. I want an alt. Nothing. Haven't had any luck yet, so maybe I pull something better. Let's see, pull the card, the card. Nope. And last one. This sucks. Labyrinth Changelier. Oh, I suck. I suck. <laughs> All right, I'm going to catch y'all after round two. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys. I went to round two. We ended up playing against Solomon Grace. This was a hard matchup, man, for what it's worth, man. Fire decks are just on fire this format. No pun intended. Um... I started out pretty strong, but he had the Ash Blossom for the Samsara Lotus. I'm like, ugh, this sucks. I miss the days when people was kind of considering not running hand traps in this format and everyone's running like 15. It just sucks getting Ash Blossom opened up on you on your best play. I'm like, man, I can't wait for that new UBL support to come out. Nevertheless, in game one, I'm just going to get Raffle Stomp, man. Um, I learned to realize in this game one, Settlement Grace is a hard counter to your bell, bro. Hard, hard counter, like hard, hard, hard counter to you, Bell. Literally, bro. That freaking Solomon Gray monster that special summons himself out of the graveyard and destroys Solomon Trap on the field was wrecking my freaking nerves this entire duel, bro. Like, game one, like, he was able to get rid of my back row, get rid of my um, continuous spells, traps. And while I was de definitely stalling out and trying to put up a fight with the you, Bell monster, just, I'm like, Bro, why does Solomon Grace have so much gas? Like, last time I played against this deck, it was still somewhat decent, but it wasn't as fast paced as it is now. I'm like, bro, this deck has gotten 10 times better. Why did Konami unban everything for this deck? I don't know. Deck needs to get hit again. Nah, actually, no, I'm joking. I don't need to get hit. The deck's just a solidly good deck. It's just like, man, the deck's too. It's like, it's good, but it's almost borderline nuts. Like, broken. It's almost borderline broken. Almost. Not there yet because Snake Eyes Fire King craps on it, obviously. Game two started off pretty strong. Grr. Set up my whole field. Same thing's gonna happen. We're gonna go back and forth. Like my opponent had the Ash Blossom, which sucks. I mean, fire decks always open Ash, I guess. I, I guess things happen. But of course, some of the Red Monster in the Graveyard is gonna give him his advantage to get start picking up my back row. And on top of the head, a Cosmic Cyclone. And it was like an almost, oh my god, down goes Frasia, down goes Frasia. Luckily for me in this game, he, my opponent was lower on life points. He had to use common Cyclones. And I was able to um, deal some heavy damage to my opponent with some of my Ubel stuff with the fusion and everything. And unfortunately for me, or my opponent, not for, for me, my opponent, the game one and game two took for a long time. My opponent was just reading my cards, taking the time with his plays. And on his term, he's trying to make a board and didn't go to battle phase, and I'm going to win game two in time. Like, Ubel's one of those decks, right? 
I don't mind my opponent taking their time. I don't mind people taking their time at all. It's just one of the things, like, I hate winning in time, but if I have to win in time, I'm going to win in time. If you want to take your turn, take as much time as you want to play in your game and you burn yourself out in the clock, that's on you. It is what it is. Catch you guys in the next clip. Hi, guys. Round two is over. Ended up drawing against Solomon Grace. I found out that that kind of, like, hard counters me. He won game one because he just kept blowing my back row with the, um, with the, the one that keeps coming out of the back, the gray yard, the pop back row. And so I couldn't keep my spell cards on the field. And he ended up out grinding me and beating me in that game. Game two, it was just a long, drawn out game. I was higher on life points and I won in time. So it's crappy, but it is what it is. That's good knowledge, though, because I know at least I need to probably be citing something for Salomon Grace because, like, oh my God, maybe Diddy Crows or something. This to stop the little gray yard group and stuff. I know Salomon Grace is kind of roguish right now, but I don't like really struggling. And I get the game, I kind of struggle. How you do, Warren? You, you won round two? Nice, nice. So, uh, I was trying to go undefeated, undefeated, but didn't draw, suck. Didn't draw this guy yet. So, hopefully, I can draw him in round three. But it's been some good testing so far. There should be two more rounds up. A lot of money on the line tonight. So, I'm trying to definitely win me some money. And I think this deck can do it. It just. Hope they don't have back row support. So, hey, what can I say? So, yeah, man, I'm going to catch you guys after round three. Y'all stay tuned. Also, I forgot to mention, there's like $400 on the line in store credit tonight for this day, double pay all night, and it's like 20 something play, odd players here. So, yeah, it's really intense. You guys can see the room is pretty crowded. So, yeah, y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to round through the tournament. Ended up playing against a uh, really good player, The Blessing. Haven't seen him in a minute, man. Um, First ran into this dude about 10 years ago. He had a YouTube channel. He was actually a Yugi tuber. He actually gave me one of my first deck profiles when I topped the gadgets. And out of nowhere, the dude just started topping regionals and YCS. It's been insane watching this dude's career for the longest. He actually told me he used to be a fan of my channel back in the day. So it's pretty good, you know, talking to him, shooting the shit, and, you know, seeing him every once in a while at a big event. He stays like two hours away from Chicago. So it was definitely surprising seeing him at the shop. But. A lot of players know already in Illinois that Emporium TCG probably has some of the best prize support on Saturdays in Illinois for Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the, day the double payout Saturdays are insane. And on top of that too, he told me he was getting ready for a regional. So, you know, drive down to Chicago, that, that, that makes sense. Considering, especially considering most parts of Illinois is trash in comparison to Chicago. Depending on some suburbs are, are cool, but most people who live in the burbs, like, a lot of people like to come down to the city for the weekend because it's always a nice vibe. Um, nevertheless, um, started off pretty strong. I opened up all my combos. I had Super Poly. I had a lot of the stuff. However, he kind of played around it and started doing really good. And all right, I don't know what's happening. My computer just froze while I was recording. However, I'm fixing the recording now. Hope it comes out good. Um, I lost game one um, because he just had an out to everything. And he had like a six minute in phase, which was insane. Like, I nibbed him and he played through nib and it was just like, oof, that sucks. Um, however, game two was a lot better. I started off really strong again, um, popped off really crazily. He had a bestial and he did bestial my Sunflower Lotus. However, same concept, same setup. And I'm just going to have a lot more on some plays. What really helped me was the um, some limited outside deck that honestly helped me out in this game a lot. It's going to help me win this game because... That game one took like probably 30 minutes, and then game two, we were running low on time. He's gonna rush the battle phase, try to do damage. And I think he didn't realize that I had Nightmare Paint with a U Bell on board. So, and I also uh, super poly into Predator Plan Dirk Stabia, so he was forced to eat 6,000. GG, no re. Alright, guys, we're going to end up drawing with this guy, the blessing. He's a legendary youth. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh player, you YouTuber, was kinda everything. Nasty, I'm not gonna lie, you but nasty, um, I gave him a win because like I'm trying to make sure we guarantee prize and so at max one one, we're gonna play into the last round. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, went to the final round tournament. Ended up playing my homie James and his Snake Eyes deck, pure. So I think it was pure Snake Eyes. I don't think he was running Snake Eyes Fire King. I just didn't see it on the Fire King engine. If he was running the Fire King engine, he didn't need it. Um, this game is really swift. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Um, started off pretty pretty I had an okay hand. Um, he didn't take the ash bait like a good player and When I went for the Samsara Lotus, I activate Lone Fire Blossom effect. Yu-Gi-Oh players go negate <laughs> And that was all she wrote for game one. Um, pretty cool. Pretty simple Um, what I ended up siding in for game two. I think I'm siding in summon limit Even though I'm siding um, the artifact Lancia for evenly 
I'm not really signing in last year like that. And that's mainly because, like, my theory is I don't really want to sign it in. Like, they have it the evenly, they have it the evenly. So I went first again, got Ash Blossom again, and it was like, oh my god. However, I did have Super Pilot, so I was, I was kind of able to stall out a little bit and then top deck some stuff. But James just had everything. He, he had everything I, he, to counter my field. What really stopped me was the suit was the Ash Blossom, and that hurt a lot because I couldn't get off none of my plays. And then the Snake Eyes deck, with abusing the um that stupid Synchro monster is just so good because they Synchro, it's a tuner, it's also fire, it can also revive itself. They can also revive it from the banished zone to abuse it because it's a level one fire. And I'm just like, man, I'll be glad when this deck get hit, because this deck is just too resilient. Way too resilient. Like the deck's good, like, but everyone, we already know that. Ain't no point in complaining in a tier zero format. It's a tier zero deck for a reason, so. It's which I, um, my opponent didn't draw Ash, but it is what it is. So, so I got too old. First time getting too old, my UBL deck. That sucks. It is what it is. GG no re. I got smack against Snake Eyes Fire Kings. My opponent James, our man right here, sir. Strong man right there. I had it out. Hell <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Anytime, bro. Um, yeah. He had it out to everything I could do. It wasn't nothing I could do. And then um, game one, I kind of low-key brick. My only play was Samsara D Lotus, but I opened up a lot of my Kaiju engine and sucked. And then on top of that, like, Ash Blossom made me both game one and game two hurt. And also on top of that, just, I don't know. I didn't really have an out. That deck's so good. Even if I had outs, so it was just too slow. And then Bell hurt me because Bell stopped me from bringing my guy back from the banning zone, which sucked. Because it stays bring out the graveyard, it can stop from banning zone too, which sucks. So yeah, deck's still solid though. Just I just got countered at every angle. So technically went X one two with two draws, but I gave the blessing a win. Just uh, I didn't really care. I just wanted to test this deck out today, honestly. I think about it though, I should have just rolled for the win, but I wasn't thinking at that time. We were just like, oh, we both draw, which sucked. Anyway, man, I'm gonna catch you guys when I get home for the closing statements. Y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna film a deck profile for you guys. So I know you guys want the deck, so y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, back at home now. Same night. Um, so yeah, man, I just finished eating my White Castle and decided to go over my um tournament report for both tournaments. So I already filmed this scene once, but my GoPro died. So we're gonna we had to let the GoPro charge up and film it again. First tournament was pretty much a breeze. It was really um really getting used to the U Bell deck. And the deck was simple. Luckily, my opponents didn't often open up no hand traps or like that. And I just popped off and get, did really, really well. Went undefeated with a draw. Second tournament, however, a little more competitive. Played against more meta decks. Ended up going one win, one loss, two draws. Something I was not expecting. I was expecting at the very most X1. Maybe X2, like if the last round was a grinder. But X1 because the deck performed really well. One thing I learned about my build in particular, and I realized the reason why I did so well at the local Sully Abo versus um, at Emporium, Sully Abo, I lost most of my dice rolls. My build is heavy board breaking going second, main decking the interrupt the Kaiju Slumbers with the Kaijus with the Super Probably. So I had a few games where I went first at um, Emporium today, and the deck just had hands of like interrupt the Kaiju Slumber, Kaiju. One U Bell play, and I was really prone to losing to Ash Blossom, and that really showed how weak my deck was. Because in the final round, played against some um, Snake Eyes Fire Kings, and a, in a few parts of my game versus Salomon Grays, where I just couldn't pop off because after they asked me, I just had to pass. So it made me realize, like, dang, Ash Blossom hurts my deck a lot. Like they have the Ash, it's kind of like, ooh, I don't know. However, um, I think this would be, this is definitely not an issue for the Unchained version. Um, so Unchained version might be a little bit better. I may have pulled a, depend, it really depends. Like if they have the Ash, I mean, you're pretty much in an effed up situation, but it also depends on if you open up the Nightmare Pain with a Dark Monster, cause you can still kind of pop off. So ultimately I learned a lot today about the weaknesses of my deck, which is good. Like I needed these losses to learn how to make the deck better. And I do know what changes I'm going to make moving forward. Probably going to move the Interrupt Kaiju Slumber to the side deck and focus on some other cards in the main deck. I don't know. Like, I feel like my list is really good. I just changed my sleeve so that I got to have less clumpy hands. So I got to see what my deck is like 
against other matchups. Like against Branded, it was a hard matchup. Like against the Blessing, a good player. Um, like I said, he we drew, but I gave him the win because he had a better um tie, he had a better record than me, so I just let him have the win. Um, because like the way I saw it was, I'm like, wait, he was already undefeated. If he wins the next round over X one, he's guaranteed prizing. Um, if I win. Let's say like we rolled for it and I won the dice roll and I go to the next round and lose. I'm an X11, so I wouldn't have got prizes. I'm like, you know what? You can just have to win, bro. It's whatever. I I was more happy that I got good play testing against a good player. Because he's top YCSs and regionals and stuff. So he's really good. So I was ha- more happy that I got good test- play testing against a good player rather than, like, you know, because, you know, prize structure is like whatever. I like play testing against good people. So that was a really interesting game. And it really showed me, okay, this deck can do some things against decks like Branded. Depends on what kind of hand I have, my opponent's knowledge of the deck, and the time clock, too, because a lot of the times, this was a lot of my games today as well. A lot of my opponents did not know what the F to do, and they were overthinking a lot of their plays, and a lot of their turn ones was taking forever because they were trying to not just get you you bail F up because, you know, the trap cards like Super Poly, then they also know everything's like a magic cylinder, so they're trying to think about ways to beat over my Ubel, also while th- being time conscious. And a lot of the time when you're focusing on your game state, you don't really look at the actual clock. So it's like game one is over, like, oh my God, that was like 30 minute game one. Then I am when I went up winning game two, because we we're both playing a little faster, then that's how the draw happen, which kind of sucked. I'm like, oh, this draw suck. I'm like, yeah, you can just have to win. That's how I don't care. And then play against Snake Eyes Fire King in the last round. Good matchup. My boy James has had he had everything. What well, really was Ash Blossom? I think if he didn't have Ash, and I think I would have guaranteed one because I've watched YGO Pro replays of Snake Eyes Fire Kings versus U Bell. And I know the deck just has a lot of because Snake Eyes Fire Kings just grinds and grinds and grinds. And the deck can have a lot of spot removal. So if you get get rid of U Bell's back row, you're in a good position. So it was kind of like, uh, he Ash Blossom me, and that really exposed how weak my deck was. And on top of that, I didn't really draw the best hands. Like I went first game one. I had a Samsara D Lotus. If I could have popped off with that, it was a one card combo, everything you need. However, I didn't pop off with that, and I just had board breakers, and I was like, oh crap, I lost. Then game two, went first again, had stuff to play with, but just wasn't enough because he had that Ash possible for my Samsara D Lotus again. I'm like, oh my god, why did you open Ash twice? But overall, man, I'm going to figure out the change I'm going to my deck. Still going to give you guys that list. I know you guys want to see the, at least see the list. It's Yubel Kaiju for you guys haven't figured it out already. The Kaiju engine is good. I almost thought about just making my deck be a go second deck. I'm like, dude, I got three Nibiru's in the main deck, three D shifters, the Kaiju package. Like, my deck is so solid going second. Like, I don't really care about losing my dice rolls. And because I know I'm not going to get OTK, I know I can break boards, and I'm just really comfortable against the majority of my matchups. I didn't see Nibiru all day today, and when I did see it, it didn't matter. But nevertheless, man, post thoughts and opinions about this video. Comment section down below. Also, when you guys are here, man, make sure you check out my, check out my links in the description down below. Imperium Duelist to save yourself 10%. Yu-Gi-Oh! Mint to save 7% on all your Yu-Gi-Oh! purchases and sales. And I got some few things coming along. I haven't got my sponsorship stuff in the mail to do the promotion for, but those are coming, man. But, like, yeah, man, like, I'm really loving this u Bell deck. I think I started off pretty strong with it. Pretty much doing solid in two events. He had a second tournament. I didn't do too hot. However, when you really look at the grand scheme of things, I really only really lost one time. I mean, the draws happen and they suck. So I got to work on that. But in a deck like you, Bell, where it's kind of like it can grind and burn and your opponent kind of runs out of their resources, they're kind of in a bad position. I'm thinking about also running the um the third you Bell form because I'm only running the... Um, you bell the Terra Incarnate. I'm thinking about running the third one because there was a few times where I feel like that third one could have came up, even at the last local. So I might pick up the third one and run it in the deck as well. So I don't know. I'm going to figure it out, though, man. But it's your boy Ro, bringing you guys another epic vlog, and I'm signing out. Peace. See you guys in the next video.